Thomas Paine and the Iron Bridge. In 18th century America, the prevalent method of getting across rivers was using wooden or stone bridges. The ferry boat was also an option if there wasn't a bridge, which was often because the technology wasn't that great. The problem was that when it rained, the wood easily decayed and the stone bridges got worn down easily and weighed too much. Because the ferry boats were a monopoly where bridges couldn't be built, they charged a lot, especially in bad weather where the job could get really dangerous. In short, the system was inefficient and even deadly. This got Thomas Paine thinking. He wanted to implement Britain's new technology, the Iron Bridge, to help America's transportation. He spent lots of time developing a model. His model design was designed to be on the Schuylkill River and was iron in single span, which meant it didn't have any piers, which allowed bridges to be built over deeper rivers and bigger ships to pass through these bridges. Another aspect of his design that was new was the process. While designing the model and even after, Thomas Paine kept it public and open for everyone, unlike most iron workers in England who guarded it like a secret. This new method allowed other designers to later go back to Paine's work and use it. Now Paine only needed funding to make his designs a reality. However, the Iron Bridge was a relatively new and foreign concept to most Americans, and transportation was not a priority, so funding was hard to get. Tired of all the rejections that he got, Paine set out for Paris. In Paris, Thomas Paine wrote to George Washington and Ben Franklin, detailing his project. They did express approval and tried to help him, but things didn't work out so well for Thomas Paine. Paine also presented his design to the Academy of Science. While they did re recognize his work, they also did not have funding for him. After, in search of another opportunity, Thomas Paine again moved countries to England. He was more successful there. After a few obstacles, Paine finally got the opportunity to build his bridge over Sunderland River. Previously, there was only boats crossing the river, so it was pretty revolutionary for the area. This bridge still exists to, um, to this day. After this accomplishment, some serious political issues were brought to Thomas Paine's mind, so he moved from architecture to politics, returning to America to work on a new book called Rights of Man. In 1809, Thomas Paine unfortunately passed away. However, his legacy did not end. As for funding for the Schuylkill River finally came in the 1830s, the architects working on the project used Thomas Paine's design. Like this case, Paine's attempts at bettering America's architecture kept influencing later generations of architects. Although Thomas Paine's bridge was not physically successful in America, his journey of designing and promoting it influenced American bridge-making history. Now for some effects that the Iron Bridge had in America. The first short-term effect was that people could move places. The bridges were all over rivers that were only crossed by boat and allowed people to move within and between cities more safely and effectively. A demographic surge actually happened in Philadelphia after the Schuylkill River was built. The second short-term effect was the economic exchange between travelers and the ferry boats. Now that they didn't have a monopoly on transportation, merchants and farmers of all economic backgrounds could transport goods, having a great impact on trade. The third effect was the introduction and integration of tolls that Thomas Paine introduced. While travelers did not have to pay the ferry boats, there was a toll collected for the use of the bridge, which was a potential revenue, though the toll wasn't big enough to discriminate between classes. The fourth effect came from the awareness that Thomas Paine raised for the importance of bridges in America through his many rallies for funding and correspondences. Later, we see a, a push towards safe and effective transportation and government policies. Some long-term effects that happened in the continuation of short-term effects. Though the Iron Bridge was not alone in producing the effects, it was definitely a contributing factor. One example is the increased mobility through the Schuylkill River Bridge that definitely con contributed to the success of Philadelphia that we see to this day. 
The toll system has also been adopted in the U.S. as Payne advocated. His model of the iron bridge set up a grid preface for the steel bridge introduced in the late 1800s. The bridges definitely played a role later in the Civil War, especially when sturdy bridges